Once upon a time, there were two rival queens who waged war on each other for so long, they came to realize that while they couldn't live with each other, they couldn't live without each other either. It all happened getting on for a hundred years ago. What became of them, those colorful citizens of Razorhurst? Well, Nelly married Guido, but she left him after only a couple of months. She went back to prostitution, back to falling in love with bad men who owned her. But no one ever really owned Nelly Cameron. No one ever really knew her, or knew why in just a few years she would put her head in a gas oven. After Nelly dumped him, Guido Coletti went back to the consolation prize of Dulcie Markham. Back to declaring he was going to set up the biggest criminal empire Australia had ever seen. He didn't even see the declaration of World War II. Back at his fruit and veg barrow to make ends meet, he got into one argument too many and came off second best. Frank Green's career as a gunman was pretty much at an end. By World War II, he was reduced to working as a cockatoo for an SB betting shop. By 1956, he was dead after a quarrel with his lover. Big Jim Devine was acquitted of taxi driver Fred Moffat's murder, but his chronic gambling and violence were wearing out his welcome in Maroubra. By 1946, Tilly had finally had enough and she divorced him. Heartbroken, Jim moved to Melbourne where he worked as a pub bouncer and ended his days a lonely old man. Phil the Jew's vow to do Kate slowly came to nothing in the end when his gangster past caught up with him. A bullet he'd carried in his gut since 1929 suddenly turned septic and killed him before he was 50. Kate outlasted him, just as she'd promised. Eileen Lee had her fair share of scrapes with the law including getting done for nicking a fur coat. But perhaps her daughter was the making of her, because she certainly didn't follow in Kate's criminal footsteps. And what of the faithful retainers? Bill the Octopus Flanagan, May Seckold, the man known as Nugget, whose real name may have been Henry Pierce, and Kate's pal, Mona Woods. Who can say? One thing's for sure, they're long dead now. Vale to them all. As for the police, Ray the Blizzard Blizzard rose to the rank of superintendent and headed up the consorting squad. He was awarded medals for distinguished service and lived to a ripe old age. Tom Wickham went on to become chief superintendent of the New South Wales CIB. In 1946, he was awarded a King's Medal for distinguished service. Tom's partner, Sid Thompson, left the force under a cloud in the 1950s. The less said, the better. Bill Mackay was a great pragmatist and a great reformer. He almost single-handedly created the New South Wales Police Force. He was also a great boozer. After a decade as commissioner, he died of a heart attack in 1948. Lillian Armfield went on helping fallen women until she retired in 1949. The year after women officers were finally issued uniforms. She died alone in her one-room flat, aged 86. So that left just Kate and Tilly. New generations muscled in on them. Laws were passed against them. And the real scourge of all gangsters, the tax man, inevitably came knocking. No! Neither woman ever recaptured the glory days of the 20s. Their roaring days were over. Kate kicked the bucket at 84. Hundreds came to her funeral to say goodbye. When poor old Tilly passed away six years later, there was barely a soul to shed a tear. But never before or since has the underworld in Sydney, in Australia or anywhere been so dominated by just two people and two women at that. Long live Queen Kate.
Long live Queen Tilly.